And my mom was old school. When I was growing up, there wasn't no need for no Amber Alert. Hell no. Nah. I wasn't getting abducted back then. Hell no. Nah. When my mom putting that Vaseline on my face so I could look shiny and do it at that bus stop, she gave me some real good advice. When your ass get off that bus at 4.30, I want you in that house, and I mean in that house, I don't want you to let nobody in the house that I get off work at 9 o'clock tonight. <laughs> you got it? I got it. I got it. I got it. When I get off that bus at 430, I get in that house, lock that door like Fort Knox, go get me some chocolate milk, and watch my favorite cartoon, Thundercats. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thunder, thunder, thundercat. Go, Lionel, go! I be drinking my chocolate milk. This is the greatest episode I've ever seen in my life. That doorbell ring, though. Bing bong. Who could that be? I go to go, who is it? Baby, it's your grandma. Open the door, let your grandma in the house. <laughs> Sorry, grandma. My mama said not to let nobody in the house. And she meant nobody in the house that she get out work at 9 o'clock at night. Oh, baby, now grandma came all the way over here to see you. You know you can let your grandma in the house. I love you too, grandma. <laughs> now, baby, I done got two buses to come over here. I love grandma, I love you too. But my mama said not to let nobody in this house. She meant nobody in this house since you get out of work at 9 o'clock at night. Now you welcome to catch both them buses back to your house. Or you welcome to sit on the porch and wait till she get out of work at 9 o'clock at night. But could you please excuse me, I gotta get back to my Thundercats and my chocolate milk. And I go back and sit down, go Panther, go! <laughs> Next thing you know, the doorbell rang again, bing bong, what does she want? Nah! <laughs> Who is it? Boy, this your daddy, open this damn door. You got your grandmama out here sitting on the porch, you open this door and let both of us in right now! <laughs> Sorry, daddy. Mama said not to let nobody in this house. She met nobody in this house since she get out of work at 9 o'clock tonight. Boy, you know I live there. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> yeah, I'm a mama's boy. My mama took care of me and my sisters. She raised us the right way. She took care of us. She ain't put, bring no strange men in the house. You know what I'm saying? We knew their names. She introduced them. <laughs> This is your Uncle Larry, I said. You know, I be like, I thought we, you only had three brothers. Shut up, this is your Uncle Larry. You know, and, she, and she had our back, man. When my mom got a better job, she, took, she moved us out the hood. I mean, moved us to the suburb. And that's a big change from the hood when you got, you know, Alarms going off, eviction notices, busting bottles on the street to sunshine and squirrels. <laughs> Neighborhood watch. Community meetings. You ain't had no community meetings in the hood. Community meetings in the hood when the police and the ambulance on your street and everybody come out like, what happened down there? <laughs> at Pearl House. I don't know, girl, but I heard a gunshot. But we moved into the suburb, it was a change, man. You know, cause, and I had met this little white kid named Jack, Jeffrey, man. And I walked over, I went up in his house, and th th this day I learned something new. I walked up in his house, I said, hey, Jeffrey, let's go upstairs and play with some of your toys. He said, okay, well, right away. So we're going upstairs to play with some of his toys. <laughs> and all of a sudden, his mother came out the kitchen and said, hold it right there, mister. Before you move another muscle, I need you to go upstairs and I need you to clean that room and I mean clean it pronto. I was like, oh, white mamas ain't no different than black mama. 
I said, well, Jeffrey, it looks like you in trouble. I better go. I'm going to go home till you get your stuff together. Jeffrey, before I knew it, moved me out the way and stepped up on his mama like he was Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Looked her dead in her eye and said, look here, lady. As you can see, I have company. And right now, we're going upstairs to play with some of my toys, and some of them are missing. I think Lavelle took some, but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> and we're going to play for a few hours. And when we get through, I may, and I mean this, I may clean up my room afterwards. But right now, we need some cookies and some lemonade. Pronto! I'm looking at this powerful little white boy like, run, Jeffrey, run. Your mama about to cut your head off. But Jeffrey did, stood his ground, and his mama did something I ain't never seen in my life. She went, oh, and just ran in the kitchen. Jeffrey proceeded up the stairs, and I said, excuse me, Mr. Jeffrey, sir. He said, what is it, Lavelle? I said, do you have leukemia? <laughs> he said, Lavelle, why would you ask such a silly question like that? I said, well, you just stood right in front of me and told your mama that you have company. And right now, you're going upstairs to play with some of your toys. And by the way, Jeffrey, I ain't taking none of your toys. You can stop lying on me. <laughs> Jeffrey looked at me and said something I ain't never heard in my life. He looked at me and said, Pish posh, Lavelle. Pish posh. And I'm looking at my white friends like, what the hell does that mean? I'm 40 years old. I still don't know what the hell that means. Apparently, it means, listen, little fat Negro, I'm about to teach you something. <laughs> Jeffrey said, Lavelle, in my nine years on this earth, one thing I have learned, if you stand your ground and talk to your parents like an adult, they have no other way but to treat you like an adult. I guarantee you, if you do exactly like I did, step to your mama and stand your ground, she has no other way but to respect you as an adult. <laughs> Jeffrey, you scared me, you know. I get your toys back, you tripping on my head now. Huh? World going crazy, man. That my man was talking about George Bush messed up because that stuff bitch to ruin this damn country. <laughs> damn so goddamn high, I get an attitude when somebody asks me for a ride. <laughs> and I just filled my tank up. Took me seventy dollars to fill that thumb bitch up. Soon as I fill up, this bastard gonna carjack me. <laughs> I said, oh, really? I grabbed a hose and sucked all that gas out of that tank. He looked at me like, what you doing? I said, you son of a bitch, this truck ain't paid for, but this gas is. <laughs> Hell, I could be a king with almost 10 gallons of gas, player. I can run things. Gas, high gas, crazy. I mean, this this country crazy, man. Wapperson went up to 353. I'm losing weight with that some bitch in all. <laughs> Shit, that's just ridiculous. Wapperson high as hell. They need to put Clinton back in office. Where your mommy is, you go to the grocery store. She pull up in the grocery store. <clears throat> and all we gotta give you that briefing. Now, I'm gonna go in this grocery store to put a little something on the light bill. Cause they about to cut our shit off. But I ain't that worried about it. Cause I put the bill in your name. <laughs> then, I'm gonna use the rest of the money 
to get us something to eat. Now, when we get up in this damn store, I don't want you touching shit. I don't want you asking for shit. Matter of fact, I want your eyes closed. Because I don't want your ass looking at shit. Now grab one of them grocery baskets and put your baby sister in the front of the basket and put your other sister in the back of the basket. And let me tell you one more thing. If you hit the back of my heel, with that basket, two chops to the throat. Two chops to the damn throat. And let me tell you one more thing. Lavelle, Maurice Crawford. If you get up in this store and act any kind of food, and I do mean any kind of food, I'm gonna kill all three of y'all. Cause I'm 17. And I can go to jail and get out and still be young enough to make three more just like y'all. And Lavelle, I don't like how your hair growing in anyway. Repeat what I say. Go ahead. You say it. We going in the grocery store to put a little something on the light bill. Cause they about to cut our stuff out. And then you say it. You ain't that worried about it. Cause you put the bill in my name. And then you say it. Then you're going to use the rest of the money to get us something to eat. And then you say it. Now. When we get up in this store, I better not touch. Say shit if you want to. Don't say shit. And watch me pull your lungs out your damn chest. You want me to pull your lungs out your chest? Don't say shit like you're grown. Go ahead. You said don't touch nothing. Then you said don't ask for nothing. Then you said, matter of fact, you want my eyes closed. Because you don't even want me looking at nothing. But could I ask you something? What is it? I'm gonna see where I'm going. In my eyes closed. You want me to punch you in the back of your head so your eyeball pop out in your cheek? Then you said, grab one of them grocery baskets and put my baby sister in the front of the basket. And then you said, put my other sister in the back of the basket. Then you said, let me tell you one more time. He said, if I hit the back of your heel with that basket, Two chops to the throat. Two chops to the throat. Then you said, 
let me tell you one more thing. Lavelle, Maurice Crawford. You said, if I get up in the store and act any kind of fool, and you said, and I do mean any kind of fool, you said, you gonna kill all three of us. Cause you 17. And you can go to jail and get out and still be young enough to make three more just like us. Cause you don't like how my hair growing in anyway. 